Thank you for visiting Pastor Wire TV, the YouTube channel of PastorWire.com. All right. Welcome in to Pass the Wire TV. We're going to cover the four graded stakes on Cigar Mile Day at Aqueduct. I am Jim Gazzali, joined as always by the Pick Six King himself, John Stetton. John, how are we doing? Always a pleasure, sir. Yeah, it definitely is. Uh, you know, it's also a pleasure. Loaded stakes fields at... Uh, at Naira. <laughs> I, I, I got to say, I was pleasantly surprised to see nine in the Demoiselle, uh, 10 in the Remsen, and 12 in the Cigar. Uh, you know, late in the year, right after the Breeders' Cup, you know, to get 12 in the Cigar is, is, is not too bad. Yeah, for sure. For sure. I was, uh, you know, pleasantly surprised to, to see that, too. Uh, you know, after the last couple of years, you know, especially at Saratoga, where we were watching, you know, grade one stakes races with, you know, four or five horses, six tops. So uh, I agree. I agree. Certainly some some good betting options, uh, good betting opportunities on the card here Saturday. So uh, let's uh, let's dive right in and we'll we'll pull up the the PPs here and we'll go through the. The Demoiselle right off the rip here, John. What uh what did did you like at uh first glance here? Well, I don't know. I tried to get a little creative and had a had a hard time doing so. Uh I mean <sighs> The a lot live talk is going to be tough. Uh, it, it, it's not really a Philly that I, I'm I'm going to bet on. Uh, I, I I was interested really in in two Phillies. Uh, one was the two Dolomite, and the other was the nine Caldwell loves gold. Uh, I wasn't really in love with either one of them, and I would say that of of the Four stakes. This was the one that really I didn't have a, a very strong opinion on. Dolomite, I thought stretching out, you know, might might be okay. You know, inside draw, stretching out, you know, should have more speed than she did in those two sprints. Uh, should get a trip from the inside. Uh you know, a rare, a rare price from Chad, but, uh, I wasn't in love with her. Yeah. What do you make of the, let's just talk about life talk here really quick. Just coming back out of the breeders cup, you know, uh, this is a, a two-year-old Philly, obviously. Uh, so I, I don't know if, if that makes things any different, but typically you see the, the breeders cup, you know, be the, the last race of the year for, for most horses, especially coming off of, of a rather solid effort in the breeders cup. Uh, you know, she finished fourth only a, a couple of lengths back, but what do you make of, of that? You know, we'll call it a, a quick ish turnaround nowadays, you know, four weeks yeah. or so is anything to that? It's an interesting, it's an interesting thing to bring up and I'll tell you why. You would think that the horses that run back quick off the Breeders' Cup generally do very well. Uh, and I was looking up a couple of stats, and somebody brought a couple of things. Uh, I don't remember who, but someone, someone, you know, brought a couple of horses to my attention that, you know, came back quick and didn't really run that well. Uh, I think the Breeders' Cup is a hard race. It takes a lot out of these horses, and the younger ones probably takes more out of them than some of the, you know, more seasoned veterans. What I found interesting when I started delving into that whole angle is that the Breeders' Cup races coming out of them are great, but not when you come out of them quick. In other words, when these horses come back off a two-, three-month break next year, a lot of them run very well. The ones that try and squeeze that other race in before the end of the year, 
Um, a lot of them disappoint and a lot of them disappoint at short prices. Now that said, life talk does not wind up in my opinion in a, uh, field that, you know, screams talent and, 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 you know, the level of horses that she raced in the breeders cup. But, uh, you know, there is that angle to overcome and with these lightly raced horses that can, you know, step up which is one of the reasons why I kept, you know, coming back to Dolomite as a horse that can, you, you know, maybe, maybe move up. Uh, you know, they've got to overcome that, you know, and I, I would view it in this particular case with the, with the two-year-olds as more of a negative than a positive coming back quick off the Breeders' Cup. Yeah. Yeah. That, that had always been my thinking too. Uh, and, you know, there'll be a couple others that, that we'll talk about, in a in a similar light here soon uh just looking at the the weather report for for aqueduct tomorrow looks like it'll be dry but um it should be getting a, a little bit of rain here later um but probably not enough to to make any sort of difference um yeah you know i'm i'm with you usually with these races what i'm tend to look for and you know, I'm sure you'll agree is a an improving young horse that looks to be putting it all together. And that kind of led me to uh, the four most of all. The only you know the last start was was decent. Uh, probably it's its best race yet. Uh, came up on a, a sloppy track, but uh, was able to to sit off the pace a little bit and and, and drew away in, in the stretch. So uh, that's something that to me uh, suggests that that they might be a, a player in here. Um, the other one that that was a little interesting was this uh, Vino Rouge uh, was also in a little bit intriguing uh, to me as well. So. Uh, to your point too, you know, not really much that was, you know, kind of, kind of screaming at you. And in, in this one as as a horse that, that, you know, kind of towers over everybody, but uh, those two things um, stuck out to me. Um, yeah. Anything- I, you know, I, I had some knocks on, on most of all the, the, the mod horse that you mentioned, you know, one by 10 in the slop, Probably not going to get slop on Saturday, uh, and 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 generally, you know, when a horse breaks its maiden in a big race like that, uh, you know, sometimes it can be indicative of a you know, pardon the cliche quote light bulb kind of race, but uh, a lot of times those horses you, you, you know come back and get beat when they get thrown in against winners, and I tend to stay away from them. Um, Vino Rogue, I think, is a legitimate alternative to the favorite. Uh, you know, she she really hasn't run a bad one yet. She's coming around. Her two dirt races are both, you know, in my opinion, improving races. You know, Broke Maiden, come back, you know, run okay in, 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 in a stake. But I wasn't uh, sold on her either i just thought somebody might 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 be able to jump up and and you know brad cox's horse on the outside although she has been running against um uh, where is she state breads you know she's got some experience she's got decent numbers she doesn't have the best draw but i think she'll be sitting in a good spot i don't think she'll be that far back i think she'll be you know, kind of, you know, fourth, fifth, sitting all, 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 all off the speed. She's got some experience. Uh, she's got some bottom to her. She's got some consistency. I like Luis Saez. I, I, I would like her a lot more if she was drawn more inside um, in, in, in this particular race. You know, a mile and an eighth at Aqueduct. I don't love the nine hole for, for a two-year-old. But, you know, I, I thought she had a chance to run a big race here. Yeah, yeah, certainly uh no argument there. You know, she's she's probably been as as consistent as as anybody in the field and you know, that's you know, also something you probably want to um, you know, give uh 
a little bit of extra credit for, you know, especially, you know, this late in the, in the two-year-old season. You know, the pace is a little tricky here. I think, you, you, you know, if the two Dolomite is, is, you know, out of those sprints, uh, uh, you know, you know, a lot faster and a lot, you know, more into the race early, I wouldn't be shocked if she gets the lead from the inside there into that, in, into that first turn. And I think under that situation, in a field like this, um, if she does clear, I, I, I think she can become very dangerous. Yeah. Oh. <clears throat> I guess in her, in her last race, she was pretty close. So that, that to you, just kind of looking at, at the form here and, and seeing that there isn't, you know, a, a ton of early speed, I, I guess, that she might want to be a little bit more forwardly placed. I, I, I'm, I'm hoping that more so I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that she just goes and takes the lead, you know what I mean? Added a sprints, but you know, you see that happen a lot. I mean, that really wasn't a particularly fast half mile 47 and she wasn't on the lead, but I don't know how fast they're going to go on Saturday. So, um, I, I think she's got a shot to be on the lead and, 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 and I, I would like that scenario. Yeah. All right. Anything else you wanted to, to touch on with this race before we, we move on? No, we can move on. But like I said, that that to me, this was the, uh, I don't know if tricky is the right word, but the toughest race to really have a strong opinion on uh, 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 as opposed to any of the others. Yeah. All right. The, uh, the grade three go for wand is, is next. Uh, some some interesting interesting runners in in here. Uh, what what caught your attention at the the first pass? Well, let me ask you. What, 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 what who who did you gravitate to here? Well, you know, I, I have to uh, get behind my girl Venti Valentine. Okay. Um, you know, I, I think she she loves the the mile she loves aqueduct uh her best races have come over that surface at that distance uh and you know if you're going to give me 12 to 1 on a uh proven winner in in stakes company you know granted I, she hasn't uh won a an open graded stakes i don't think since um um, her, her three-year-old season early last year, but, you know, I, I think she's, she's kind of turned a corner in the last, uh, handful of months coming out of the summer. So, uh, at, at 12 to one, I, I would be, uh, giving her some, some strong consideration. Uh, the other one is, uh, ba -ba -ba -bum. This good Sam was was interesting to me as well. Um, Chad, Irad, obviously, um, and just a, a horse that that's been been fairly consistent uh, over the last couple of months. So uh, those would be the the two for me that that caught my attention. Yeah, I, I liked Good Sam myself. Uh, I just thought that. You know, the, the, the one turn mile with that outside draw is going to be ideal um, for this three year old Philly to step up and run a big race here. Uh, you, you know, I think that's 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 like her perfect scenario, uh, you know, and those 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 seven furlong races where, you know, she's run good, but not really her best. Uh I think set her up perfectly for, for, for that scenario. Um, and if you look at her race in the tempted, you know, the one time she went a mile, a one turn mile at a, at aqueduct, she won pretty easily. Uh, I could see a very, you know, beautiful type of trip here where Irad can really uh, do whatever he wants. I think that, you know, she's, she's going to go forward and she's going to be a handful. Yeah, yeah, I mean, no, no argument there. Uh, what do you make of of gerrymander? 
you know, kind of feels like we've never really, I don't know. The horse just always kind of feels like you leaves you wanting more, I guess. Well, you, you know, I think it would be hard to argue that her best race, if she produces it, doesn't make her very tough in here. Okay. But she's been somewhat inconsistent and she seems now to me to be the kind of horse that needs the perfect spot, the perfect trip, the perfect scenario and everything to kind of fall into place for her to, to do her best. Um, She'll probably be the shorter, and I'm not sure of that. I say probably be the shorter of the two Chad horses, and I've got to, I've got to lean to the up and coming three year old at the mile, um, you, you know, o o o o over her. Uh, you, you know, again, coming off that 25 length win, that's that's another thing. Like like we spoke about with the you know the Mott Philly in the in, in the other race. I like to bet against those horses most of the time. Uh, they tend to get over bet. It's hard to reproduce those kind of races. You know, I mean, they don't have to reproduce them and win all the time. But that's just an angle that I really look to bet against when I can. And I, 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 I think Good Sam is an excellent alternative. And, uh, you know, that's, that, that, that's where I land as a, a single to me. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Just look at these prices that that gerrymander is is kind of disappointed at. Um, you know, going off favored three of the of the last four. And in a lot winning, of those races, of them. you know, if you watch the replay, in a lot of those races, there really wasn't any major excuse. You know, a lot of them just she just couldn't close the deal. You know, right? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> All right, so it's good, Sam, and then move on for you. It sounds like. Yeah, that 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 that, that would be a, an accurate statement. All right. Well, good. good well, accurate statement. Would be good, Sam, and hope to move on. <laughs> <laughs> Might be good, Sam, and it's all over. <laughs> yeah. All right. You know, just one more quick little note on on Venti Valentine. You know, I think. Sure, probably not the the most likely winner in here, but certainly one that that could contend for for a piece of of the exacta um certainly the the trifecta i think she's got a, a decent amount of of tactical speed uh she can she can run up front she can sit off a little bit you know uh, she's not she's not going to come from the clouds i don't think anybody really is going to come from the clouds in this race so um i think if she's in in a good position uh, what we saw her do over the summer at, at Saratoga winning a, uh, a New York bread steak race up there uh, in in uh, July or August, uh, where she just came home best of all and, and was pretty powerful down the stretch. And you know, I think if she's sitting in a good trip, uh, sitting in a good spot, you know, at the at the top of the stretch around the, the quarter pole, um, you know, I think she'll be in a decent spot to, to have a, a legitimate shot there. No, 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 no argument. I, 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 I think she can definitely, definitely get a piece. Yeah. All right. Let's move on to the, uh, the Remsen here. And like we talked about on the, uh, the live show or the, the Kentucky Derby radar show, this race produces and has produced some, some quality runners um, in, in the last handful of years. So, you know, to me, I'm looking at this race, you know, yes, you want to, you want to handicap the race and, and try and, you know, figure out who's going to win or, you know, how to structure your tickets around certain horses to make some money. But keep in mind the horses that, that don't necessarily win this race or perhaps win this race, you know, I'll be looking to, to use them again down the line, uh, given the the success that this race has had over the last couple of years uh, with uh, winners coming back in their their three year old season. So just a, a note I, I agree I, I think it's a very important race to watch closely, take notes on and 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 definitely put some horses on your 
your radar for you know next year and even even heading to the derby you yeah. know um uh absolutely a, a hundred percent in agreement with you there yeah not that you should ever you know make bets on you know feeling like something is due to happen but i feel like uh new york hasn't had a a kentucky derby winner you know prep in new in new york in quite some time so um you know if i had to to make a, a bold prediction this far out that would be mine i think uh a horse no, prepping no, in I'm, new york is going to win uh win the derby this year or next that's, year that, that that that's interesting and 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 i look at it differently like most people will say with the exception of Dubai, I think Dubai is just a bad formula for getting to the Derby. Um, but when you look at like, you know, tracks that they say, oh, well, you know, the New York path is no good. The fairgrounds path is this, this path is that. You know, you know, to me, that really doesn't mean that much. And, you know, New York hasn't had a Derby winner coming, you know, out of the Wood Memorial in forever. They do. That's how I look at it. You know what I mean? It's going to happen eventually. So. I, 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 I really don't worry about it. Interesting. I think we've got to mention Dornuch. Um, not, not, not so much as, as, as a win candidate, he may very well be, but just because of the, the breeding connection, the year after, you know, mage and, and you, you know, him being, um, a full to mage, you know, and, 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 and mage winning the Derby. And now you have a, a, a full brother to mage, uh, an early Derby contender the, the the next year. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I think that'll that'll certainly um, you know catch catch a lot of people's attention. Uh, and you know, the other thing that'll catch a lot of people's attention is him um, winning the uh, breaking his maiden last time out at, at Keeneland. You know, I think yeah. uh, we could take a take a look at it here. You know, I think he had. One of the uh, you know more impressive maiden breakers that that we've seen recently, and you know I know there were uh, a couple of things here that that kind of stuck out to me, John. You know, I just think going forward at, at this distance, a mile and a sixteenth, which which this race that, that we're watching here, um, being on the the front end and pulling away in in the stretch like he did, as you know we'll see here in a minute was just pretty impressive to me for, for a two-year-old. What, what did you think? Well, I, 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 I thought he kind of, kind of laid over this field. So I don't, I don't, I don't really take as much out of this race as some people will. Um, I thought he was supposed to win. Um, and he did. I, I tend to like horses that are on the lead turning for home with that short stretch at a mile in the 16th at Keeneland. You know, he was had the benefit of coming out of a stake race and then going back against maidens here, um, and I think that's an edge. And 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 if you and and if you look, he's pulling away here. But look at the rest of the field; he's pulling away on a wrong lead here, and nobody else is really running. So you yeah. know, now he kind of straightens him out. He's still on the wrong lead, uh, and you know, he's he's drawing away on a wrong lead from a bunch of horses that aren't running. So what I, I gleam out of this is that he's a little bit green. He was a lot better than these horses. None of them were running at the end. He was able to beat them on, on, on the wrong lead. But where I saw the potential is that on the wrong lead, he was able to draw away. He was able to kind of respond to Luis, straighten him out. And once he kind of puts it all together and starts changing leads on cue and maturing, then he can become a dangerous racehorse and, and a serious racehorse. And I will look for that on Saturday. Okay, that's what if if I'm if I'm if I'm a Dornuch fan or if I'm in the you know early book uh, shopping for a horse like that, my my thing is. I would want to see that type of improvement on Saturday. Okay. I'd want to see him change leads. I'd want to see him be a little bit more professional, a lot less green and see how he does. Uh, if he doesn't make those improvements to me, he's someone that I would say, you, you know, could very easily wind up a pretender going forward, even though he looks good on paper. 
And I would say because of those knocks in that race, he's a horse I'd be looking to bet against on Saturday at a short price. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask you. You know, it seemed like you were listing off a, a, at least a few things that you wanted to see him improve on. And, you know, knowing you, I, I didn't think that, uh, you know, at five to two, you'd be willing to throw some money behind him to, uh, you know, no. pay to figure out if, if he's going to improve. No, I, I, I would I would definitely be betting against against him and you know i would hope you know he would be the favorite uh and he'll get a lot of mage hype um you know yeah you know, he did run that second in, in the sapling at Mammoth while he was still a maiden so I'm, I'm hoping they really all gravitate to him and uh i'm gonna i'm gonna try and beat him every which way with uh with who well there's a there's a couple that i look at in here um, one of which is, uh, the horse that you're on now, C C Sierra Leone. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, it's very tough to win first time out going a mile. It's even tougher in my opinion to do it from off the pace, uh, gun runner, Malibu moon, you know, Chad hasn't had a lot of horses for the cool more people. Um, this is one of well, one of the first ones that I can think of off the top of my head. I'm not saying he hasn't had any, um, but I don't, you know, that they're, they're not one of his his major clients. So, you know, they're a not going to give him a bad one. B he's not going to take a bad one. He's not going to run him where he doesn't belong. And you know, I I I I have to think the fact that he ran him at a mile first time out. Uh, you know, he thinks this horse wants to run a distance of ground. He's getting, you know, even more ground and, you know, probably, probably can run a little bit. So, you know, you don't break your maiden first time out that way if you can't run a little bit. And we'll take a look at him and see if, if he looks in his first start at a mile as professional or more professional than Dornuch did and, you know, see what you think. Yeah, I mean, he's the five right here. And what what I liked about this effort was his ability to, you know, Overcome. kind of, yeah, Stop. like, yeah, look, he's he's gotten into trouble there. Right. Um, he's couldn't go when he wanted to. Right. He's in between a, a lot of horses. You had, uh, you know, Manny kind of ask him a little bit and then stopped riding him a bit. And now he's going to kick to the outside and, and run everybody down. So and when he took him to the outside, if you want, he's green there lugging in. But if you, when he took him to the outside, he did it very confidently. I mean, he just yeah. swung him to the outside. Like, you know, looked like he had a, a, a ton of horse here. He's lugging in and, and, and green and still, you know, just running past those horses all full of himself. Uh, he's another one that I think has to, get a little bit more educated, but this was his first start. And to me, the kind of start that yeah. you'll really learn from and develop off of where Dor Dornuch's race, that was his third race. He should have been a little bit more advanced in my opinion than he showed. So this horse to me looks like a horse with a future. Yeah. So <clears throat> just wanted to point something out here. So, you know, he's, He's in a bit of traffic here and, you know, he's looking for a way to kind of, you know, stay in, in touch with the field and he wants to go through. And then right here, it looks like he, he gets, you know, a little bit cut off the room. Yeah. And then you see right here, Manny starts getting into him a little bit just to make sure that right here, that he doesn't lose, lose touch. Right. Right, well, he just took a, him up again a little bit there for a second, so he really lost his momentum twice and was still able to to do it. But I I think the tell is right here, okay? Is the way he just said, you know what? I don't even got to worry about going outside. Uh, you know, I got a lot of horse under me, and you, you know, for a horse to lug in a little bit like that, green, full of run, that doesn't scare me so much in the first race, especially going a mile. 
Um, you know, he looks like he wants to go two miles here to me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, the horse had, had <laughs> all sorts of, of stuff kind of go wrong. Um, during this this trip, if if you watch it close and you know, now thought, interestingly, Manny winds up on the other Chad Brown horse. He winds up on the two domestic profit. Yes. So what do you make of that? Don't don't I I I try not to read into those things unless I know the backstory. You know. Um, I would guess if you bring up domestic profit, um, PPs for a second, um, I would guess that domestic profit had a start at, at Saratoga, then, you know, came back and ran here. So I think that they might have been pointing domestic profit for pro product for the Remsen before they decided to point Sierra Leone and he might have had to call there in advance, you know, because coming out of a maiden, you don't necessarily think you're going to run back into Remsen, but maybe the way he ran prompted him to say, you know what, let's take a shot at the Remsen. Um, and Manny already had to call on, 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 on the other horse. And you, you, you know, that could easily be the scenario. I don't mind taking Jose Ortiz uh, at all. Um, so that's fine. Um, I, that, that, that doesn't, doesn't scare me at all. Uh, I think, you know, I think this horse has a, has a, has a forward move in him and, you know, he's another one that, you, you know, similar to Dornuch, but different because he's only had the one start, but I definitely look for a little bit of an improvement and more professionalism and maybe less lugging in and, you know, I'm sure Chad knows how to how to how to take care of all all of those kind of things. Um, so that's my top choice there for sure. Um, where's Chris Rick Dutro's horse is an, is another interesting horse in that race. Yeah, I mean the way uh, things have going, you know, I don't know that you can can leave Dutro off. <laughs> at, at I mean, this point. he's he's he, you know he won first time out. He comes back, he, you know, runs a credible race, shows that was no fluke, then comes back and wins the Nashua, at a, I, I think, at a big price. I can't see the price, but I'm pretty sure he was a, a big price today yeah, that he won the Nashua. One. Yeah, it was, to, you know, to 20 to 1. So he didn't get any respect there. Um, that's obviously not going to happen going forward. Either, you know, people are going to start noticing him now. But this horse has had three starts. I think they're three improving starts. Uh, he showed talent from the beginning, like you said. Rick is 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 really on fire and doing very well with the horses that he's getting um, since he's back in the game. And I think you you discount him in one of these races at your at your own risk. Um, play at your own risk, as they say. Uh, and you know, one of the things that's made Rick great over the years. And, and you can say this about a lot of the top trainers, but are knowing where to run your horses. You know what I mean? I mean, they, you know, he's one of those guys that don't run horses where they don't belong. Right. So, you know, he's, he's scary. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't, uh, I don't disagree on, on any of that. Um, you know, what I were think. Your thought, what were your thoughts on Todd's horse, Moonlight? What was that? The four? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, it's kind of tough to get a, a decent sense, right? You know, you have a, you have a, a turf start, a race that, that came off the turf, uh, and then, you know, a, a sloppy track, uh, the horse has been, been consistent. Um, you know, I just, I just wonder what the what the truth is, you know, it's, it's kind of, kind of hard to make heads or tails of, of the, the three career races so far. I, I, I am on the same page. Um, but you know, certainly takes, takes a fair bit of money is favored three times. Um, you know, I just, I don't know. That, that's another one that, you know, are you going to be willing to take 
you know, three to one, four to one to to have some questions answered for you? I, I don't I'm, know. I'm not. I, you know, I, I, I like the two that, that I mentioned. Those are the two that I'll be using. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm with you there. Uh, the, uh, the only other one that, that I kind of liked was, was this Bilal, um, you know, again, like knowing where to, to place your, your horses, you know, Bill Motts is as good as anyone. So, you know, to, to see this horse show up in, in here off of, you know, what on paper looks like kind of a, a dull effort uh, last time, um, you know, I'll be, be interested to see how this, how this horse, um, you know, runs, runs in here. Um, not sure I, I'd be backing this one to win, but, you know, again, I, I think that there's, there's potential, there so you know we'll, we'll I, I, I i agree i think he's a great horse to watch going forward um and you know there's a horse in this race the 10 private desire that i talked about on our kentucky derby radar show yeah um i don't like him here i think he took really the worst of the draw uh you know on the 10 hole so uh but he's another one that i'm going to watch going forward because you know he's a horse i think has some upside and some talent, and I and, and I agree with you on Bilal a hundred a hundred percent. You know he's he's a one to, you know one to watch. So these are definitely you, you know horses that you want to pay attention to going forward um, for not only the Derby but all those Derby preps. You know, I mean, you, you know, you've got Derby preps that are going to be coming up before you know it. You know, the Gulfstream Championship meet starts this week. You know, before you know it, you'll have like the Holy Bull and you know, those races, the fairgrounds, Oakland Park, Southwest comes up pretty quick. You know, these races start coming up pretty quick. So, you know, what I like to do to get a handle on these three-year-olds is I like to take my own notes. You know what I mean? And, and you know, go back, watch the replays, watch them with my notes and and, and see where we wind up. But but Sierra Leone definitely, definitely off that, that first race caught my eye as a horse that you know may have some ability yeah i i agree with you um you know the other thing that i like to do to to kind of prepare for the kentucky derby uh trail is watch the kentucky derby radar show on past the wire tv so i know we're, we're gonna we're gonna be uh shameless we'll, plug but we're gonna be rolling those out you know fairly uh regularly here and we'll uh, be talking about the upcoming races and going back and reviewing these races and what we thought of them so um yeah. there'll be a lot to a lot to uh take away from those shows for sure yeah definitely all right so the uh the headliner on on saturday at, at aqueduct is the cigar mile We've got a, a handful of horses to to talk about here. A loaded field of twelve uh, for this this Grade Two five hundred thousand dollar event. Um, you know, we saw some some pretty good renditions of this this race in in the last couple of years. Uh, Mind Control last year was a super exciting race to see that horse go out on top. Um, you know, after a a long, uh, successful career, uh, which, you know, we, we don't get very men, many of, uh, of those horses nowadays. So to see mind control, uh, win the cigar mile last year, the way that he did, um, and, and kind of cap, uh, an awesome career was, was pretty cool to see. I agree. Um, all right. So I know, uh, <clears throat> you wanted to, to chat about ever so mischievous. So let's, uh, Let's start the. Uh, let's start right there. And uh, they're off. Well, the interesting thing is, it's not ever so mischievous. I like out of that race. It's the ten accretive. And the one we're watching. Yeah. Well, he's the ten. He's the three here, but he's the oh, ten. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. He's the ten in the cigar mile. Right. You want to look at the PPs instead? No, you can watch the race. Um, right. You know, I thought the two had a, a a much better trip than him, and then 
when you combine that with the PPs, then I, 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 I can better articulate why I think he'll turn the tables and beat him. Not sure we can watch the okay. race and have the PPs up at the same time, unfortunately. Well, if, 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 if you look, uh, accretive, um, it was only the second time that he had gone a mile. Uh, he was a lot wider than ever so mischievous, mischievous. Uh, so I think that that, you know, second time coming back off, off that mile race um, with that nice outside draw as opposed to the inside draw and a little traffic early in the 49er. Um, I think accretive, I think the 10 is going to be a handful, a handful in the cigar mile. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can, I can certainly, uh, certainly see that um you know what do you make of the you know you probably just kind of answered this talking about the the two different trips that that these two horses had but what do you make of of a horse um you know kind of failing as as a favorite is that something that that you tend to focus on in, in any such way, or do you just kind of view each race, uh, in its own sort of, in its own sort of bubble and, and handicap it that way? I would have to answer that, that yes, I view each race in its own bubble individually and don't put a lot into that where that fact is in for me is okay. Is he a favorite that had a legitimate excuse? Was he a bad favorite? Should he not have been the favorite? Um, or, you, you know, going back to a, a gerrymander, is he a horse that just takes, you know, a, a lot of money and doesn't, doesn't close the deal. I don't think that this horse fits in any of those car you know, thing, things. I think, you, you know, Chad's horses take a lot of money. Um, we know that I think that he had a, a legitimate excuse you know, and he lost to a horse that, you know, really hasn't run a bad race yet and had, I, I thought, a better trip than he had. Uh, and I think he'll be a lot better going to smile, you, you know, right back uh, off the outside draw. So I think he's, uh, you know, very eligible, extremely eligible to turn the tables on, 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 on ever so mysterious, mischievous. Yeah, yeah, I don't 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 disagree with with anything that that you said uh while while we're here what about hoist the gold you know coming back off the uh the breeders cup sprint effort uh and i've got a got a couple of questions for you regarding this horse but you know like we were talking about earlier uh with with the return to uh racing you know within a handful of weeks after after the breeders cup how does this play in in a race like this as opposed to the the two-year-old fillies you know, given that that we're talking about a, a four year old colt here, is there any difference in in your mindset when when you're handicapping that uh, that sort of you know yes quick turnaround? Yeah, I think it's 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 much less taxing on 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 a four year old experienced horse like this that's had his share of spa starts and had his share of starts against the big boys. And this horse actually scares me a lot because. He is capable of a very big race when he's in the mood to run one, you know. And Dallas Stewart has a tendency of, uh, you know, popping up in tough, tough, tough spots at big, big, big prices uh, and horses running well. Uh, this horse is not going to be a huge price, but he's going to be a good price. And, he, he, you know, I, I think he warrants respect. Uh, I really do. Uh you know, he's probably, if I go too deep in that race, he's probably the next one that I use, believe it or not. Um, what about the, the, you know, we'll call it a stretch out in, in distance. I know when we talk about the, the Breeders' Cup dirt mile, right, it, it tends to, to favor horses coming back from longer races. Um, but when, you know, you look at, at this hoist, the gold is, is stretching out from, from six furlongs. It does that make a difference? Should we, you know, view these horses 
uh, yes, in mile races going one way or the other, does one work better than, than the other in, in your opinion? A hundred percent. I think that history, um, will show. And again, I go by memory. I don't like really look up these statistics, but historically the Met mile, which is a one turn mile and the cigar mile, which is a one turn mile, both key New York you know, one turn mile races, um, sprinters historically do very well in them and do better than they do, say, at a Keeneland mile or a Santa Anita mile, which are two turn miles. Um, or that Saratoga ridiculous mile that's a <laughs> turn and a half or whatever you want to yeah. call it out of that, that Wilson shoot, which I think is just a ridiculous configuration, but that's, that's just my opinion. But so... You know, if this race was being run at Keeneland or at Santa Anita and they were going two turns, I'd say it's a negative for Hoist the Gold. But Hoist the Gold is a sprinter. But I think that sprinters do very well in the cigar and in the Met. So in this particular case, I don't view it as a negative at all. Uh, whereas, you know, in, in, in a two turn race, I, I, I probably would, I'm still concerned about coming off the breeders cup, uh, which is why I lean much more to accretive, but, uh, you know, this to me is, a, is a scary horse and you can't really say that he can't win the race. If he shows up with one of his, his best races. Now he really hasn't produced that kind of race in the toughest of fields, but you know, this is not the toughest cigar mile that I've ever seen. Um, it's definitely not as tough as a lot of the Met miles that we've seen. So, right. um, I think he, I think he could make noise here. Yeah. Yeah. The, um, the return from the, the breeders cup is always, you know, uh, uh, concern for me, but you know, if you look at this, this workout that he, that he turned in last week, you know, and this seems to be his, his MO, um, putting in a, a nice strong workout before he, uh, before he heads to the track. I mean, even like, look at the last two, I mean, you know, goodness, look at the, these numbers are just, you know, he's a fast worker. That's that, that, that that's for yeah. sure. You know? Um, so, you know, because he's worked fast and not run back to those works in the past, I don't put as much weight on that as I would if, you know, all of a sudden he's working really good. Right. Um, let's talk about uh, three technique here. Another one coming out of the, the Breeders' Cup sprint. Um you know, I don't think anybody gave him gave him much of a shot in there. You know, thirty five to one. You know, elite power pretty much dominated that that race. But uh, what about this one? If anything, uh, coming back here in the the cigar mile is um, intriguing or or not intriguing well, to you? You know, he's a, he, he's a pretty honest horse, um, and he does show up with some good races on his best day. Um, I just personally think he's a cut below some of the better ones in here. Just my opinion. Uh, would he shock me? No. Would he surprise me? Yes. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I know what you're saying. Um, yeah. I don't know. Uh, this is. Uh, yeah. I don't know. The horse doesn't win. <laughs> you know? Well, he's got, you know, those back to back wins at, you know, Churchill and Belmont. But yeah, you're right. He 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 doesn't win that many. And uh, you know, like I said, you know, to me he's a he's a he's a cup below. Yeah. Um the other one Senor Buscador. And I like this horse um coming off his his win in the, the San Diego handicap of it. I think I had him that day um, and, you know, thought he, he ran well. Um, and, you know, his Pacific Classic wasn't, wasn't bad either. Uh, but, you know, the, the Breeders' Cup Classic, 
you know, didn't really see much of him or, or hear of him <laughs> at all really throughout that race. So what do you, uh, what do you make of this one? I think, um, well, I, uh, yeah, the he's morning line favorite in here. Yeah. He, he'll, he'll be the morning line favorite. Um, I, you know, I don't think a one turn mile is his best game. I think he wants more distance than that. Um, so do I want a favorite at, at not his best game? Probably not. Um, he's also coming off, uh, you know, the Breeders' Cup Classic. We talked about, you know, not that being, you know, that not being an ideal situation. Yes, he's an older horse. It doesn't worry me as much as, you know, with some of the babies. But, um, you know, he's coming off a bunch of hard races, in my opinion. And now he's going into a, a hard race that's probably a, a, a shorter distance and a faster pace than he does his best. So, you know, maybe if they went crazy fast early, um, that might set him up um, for a late run, but I just don't, I don't really see it. Yeah. Yeah. Me neither. Um, when I, I saw the, the Naira press release and, you know, this horse was, was the headline. Um, you know, which they typically tend to write about the, the favorite, um, you know, in the, the top of their press releases. I was a little shocked that he showed up here, to be honest, first of all. And then, um, you know, even more shocked that, that he, you know, was, was the morning line favorite, um, just for, for the reasons that, that you mentioned, you know, I, I don't think that this distance suits him well. Um, and you know, We'll see, but but at that that short of a price, uh, I'll I'll definitely be be looking elsewhere for sure. What did you think it a four? One of two Chad Brown other horses. Yeah, I mean, you know, again, it's it's tough to to kind of get get a, a sense here. You know, I feel like this this horse is probably. Um, you know, underachieved a, a little bit, um, you know, perhaps a, a little bit of a, of a pace advantage, you know, like you said, with the one turn mile, it might be advantageous to be, be out front, which, which this horse figures to be. Um, so we'll see, but you know, nothing really kind of, screamed at me off the page that, that this that this horse would be be much of a factor. You know what caught, caught my eye? You know, he's an into mischief. He's lightly raced. Uh, you know, he had two starts at the end of his two-year-old year. They were okay, improved in the second one. So I like to see a pattern where a horse improves second off the layoff. So that tells me, okay, you, you know, he started in October as a two-year-old and then ran back in November and improved. He started in October as a three-year-old, now running back in December, technically, liable to improve again. Uh, you know, he lost to Signator, who's, you know, a, a well-regarded horse. But I, I find it interesting when Chad spots his horses that are very lightly raced extremely aggressively, uh, they tend to step up and run well. Uh, so I have a hard time tossing this horse. I can toss Dr. Ardito, who's <laughs> eight to one on the morning line and also a Chad horse a lot easier than I can Cascase, who is 20 to one and, 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 and only has three starts because with Dr. Ardito, I think, you know, I kind of know what he is and know what he's capable of. Um, with the four, I don't. Um, so to me, He's a little bit scary on the, on, on, on the come, you know. Now, we talked about betting horses on the come at a short price. Don't want to do it. But, you know, at 20, 25 to 1, Chad on the lead with Jose, you, you, you know, I can use that. You know, I can, I, I, I can use that. And if he quits and they run past him and he folds like a soup sandwich, I can deal with that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Like, I wonder why, why there was such a, a long break. Um, well, obviously there was an issue. You know, I mean, I, 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 you know, 
if it was to me, you know, if it was a major issue, he's not running back into Seagal off one race. True. Uh, but at the same time, I feel like it, it might be asking a lot of it's a horse. Definitely, uh, it's a big ask. It's a big know, ask. To, to, you know, come in here off of a, uh, off of a, uh, an N one X that they didn't even win. So right. big ask, no question. Big ask, but Chad has a history of, of doing well on those big asks. I mean, you know, I can think of horses that, you know, broke their maiden and went out to California for a grade one off the maiden win and, you know, win or, you know, get beat a nose, you know, and you know, he, he, he's one of those guys like we spoke about earlier that doesn't run horses where they, where they don't belong. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's true. That is true. Um, this high Oak is, is interesting. Uh, you know, felt like this, this horse had, had a decent summer, you know, didn't win, but felt like, you know, for, for being, a, a long shot in those two races at, at Saratoga, you know, represented himself well. Um, what do you make of, of this horse? You think there's, there's any, any chance in, in here at all for, for high Oak? Yes. I, th I think high Oak is, is, a, is a live long shot. Um, I like Saez on the horse. Um, you know, no knock on Katie Davis. She rode the horse very well three times. Uh, they took her off for the bold ruler, put Jose on. Uh, I thought he ran well. Now he gets Saez. And I, I actually think, think that the one turn mile just looks perfect for high oak yeah um, looks like that's right what he's been asking for for a long time and he finally gets it you know his fountain of youth that he, he, he you know was a disaster is a two-turn race and since then he's done nothing but sprint you know now he's got that elongated one turn mile sprint and he's finished a couple of times and ran a couple of times where it looks like, you know what, that's exactly what's going to be his best setup and configuration. And, you know, you got Mott and Luis Saez at a big number uh, with a horse who has run some big races in the past. I, I know, it, you know, he won the Saratoga special at a big price as a two year old. I had him that day. Uh, so, yeah, he's. He's, uh, you know, a, a, a live long shot, in my opinion. Yeah, I mean, just look at these. It looks like the horse turned a corner at, at Saratoga. You know, like I said, it, it hasn't won, but you can see the improvement and then the consistency afterwards. But look at the, the horses that, that Hyoke is going up against. Gunite, Elite Power, uh, Cody's Wish creative that that's in here too. Right. Um, even, even Durante who's come back and win again. So, you know, you have, <laughs> you have like the cream of the crop in the, in the sprint division that, that this, this horse was, was going up against and, you know, certainly outmatched and, and outclassed um, this field a little bit more wide open. So, you know, I, I think to your point that there is um there is the potential for for a bit of an upset with with this one. No question. I I, I wouldn't argue that. Um, what do you make of this pipeline horse? You know, first time for for Sherry Devoe here. You know, this horse has always kind of like been felt like this horse was always kind of talked about, but never really produced what what we thought it could i agree with that um i i was never really on his bandwagon but you're right there was a lot of hype to this horse he ran in some very um aggressive spots a lot of people that you know had him on the radar as a you know a, a, a budding top contender uh, never really did pan out. Now he moves to another barn, and Sherry does very well with 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 with, with, with new horses. Um, but I, he had enough chances to prove it to me and didn't. So he would have to really surprise me. Yeah, for sure.
for sure. So just one, one last thing about the, um, the, the pace dynamics here, given that it is a, a one turn mile, um, you know, looking here with the, with their running styles that, that Brisnet provides, how do you kind of see and envision this, this race, um, shaping up? Well, I think, I think you got, you know, three, three horses that are going to be close to the pace and, and, and right on the pace. And that would be ever so mischievous Cascase and hoist the gold. Um, I think those three are going to be the main pace factors. Uh, I think accretive is going to be sitting in a garden spot. And I think high Oak is probably going to be sitting in a garden spot as well. Three technique as well. Um, everybody else probably a little bit further back than that, at least, at least the contenders. So, um, I, you know, I, 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 I think there'll be an honest pace, you know, to say, uh, this cigar is, you know, historically a fast race. They usually go fast to the half. This, you know, this in the Met Mile, they, 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 they usually go fast and, and they usually hold pretty well. You know what I mean? The speed doesn't really come back as much as you think it might, even when the pace is fast. So, um, I wouldn't want to be too far back. You think that has anything to do with the, the type of track that they're running over at Aqueduct in the winter? No, I think it has more to do with it being a one-turn mile elongated sprint and quality horses are able to are able to just hold their ground on that distance, you yeah. know, and that configuration. I think, you know, it's why you see sometimes horses in the Met Mile, you know, sprinters go 22, 44, 108 and change. And you think the closers are going to, you know, inhale them and they finish in, you know, 33 and they're still there. You know what I mean? Right. And, uh, you know, good horses can, can, can carry their speed under, under those kind of circumstances. Right. Good. Well, that's, uh, that's all, all four of the, the stakes races at Aqueduct here on, on Saturday. Uh, you know, big, big one with the cigar mile and, you know, kind of kicks off the, the New York based preps for, for the Kentucky Oaks. And the Kentucky yeah, Stadium. and 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 it also kind of closes out New York in a little bit and shifts things out uh, to Florida for the you know the Gulfstream Championship meet and the three year old preps over there. A lot of the riders that are heading to Florida um, will head there after this weekend, uh, so you'll see that. And you know, this is really the last big day of the year with the exception of Santa Anita's opening day, the day after Christmas when they run the Malibu and a couple of other stakes. And I already told you who's going to win the Malibu at the Breeders' Cup. And uh, if he's there, I, I, I'll, I'll stand by that. And I never, <laughs> you know, I never like to handicap before the past performances come out and give it in. But if that horse we saw, what was his name, Hajazi, runs anything yeah. like he did that day that we were standing there on that Friday, you can just give him the Malibu trophy now, as far as I'm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll see. We'll see. Um, we'll see if you're right about that a, a handful of months ahead of time. Um, yeah, no, I, I, I just thought, well, you know, I, I thought he could have won the sprint. Yeah. I mean, he did look good. I, look I, good, I, so. I, I think they could have run him back the next day on 24 <laughs> hours and he might've been able to win the sprint, but I, yeah. I, I don't know. You know, we'll, we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, that's the recap or the the preview, I should say. And you know, hopefully, hopefully everybody got got some good insights and and a way to uh, to narrow down the those tickets and and hopefully uh, make a little bit of money here on Saturday. We got uh, the next Derby Radar show coming up pretty soon. Our first live show was pretty successful, so we'll be doing another live show pretty soon. Uh, so we got a lot coming, a lot coming. We got some big plans for the Pegasus. Stay tuned for that. Nobody does it better.
Hi everybody, Dan Oman here with some exciting news. The RF Formulator, the gold standard in past performance information, is now free exclusively on DRF Bets. Join DRF Bets with the promo code WINNING, get a $250 first deposit match bonus, a $10 free bet, and free Formulator already uploaded to your account. Access Formulator's premium features, including sortable trainer stats, race replays, personalized trip notes, and lots more. Free Formulator, exclusively on DRF Bets. Classic. Vino Rosso has taken the lead. And 